Good day, everyone. A young boy was riding a minibus taxi home from Sunday school one Sunday afternoon, very proud of a card he was given. It was a picture with a caption on it that read, Have faith in God. And as the bus was going down the road, the picture flew out the window. The boy cried out to the driver, Stop the bus! I've lost my faith in God. The driver pulled over to let the boy retrieve his prized possession. A passenger made a remark about the innocence of this little boy. But a more observant passenger said aloud, We all should be more concerned about our faith. Now today, are you concerned about your faith? Do others see your faith? Faith should be consistent and it should be seen in our daily lives. When people see you, they should see your faith. They should see your faithfulness when we walk, talk and in your actions through adversity. Adversities face each and every one of us. How we handle our troubles reflect our faithfulness in God. We all have troubles in our lives when our faith could be questioned. We need to pray that God will help us during these times. If you believe that God sent His Son to die for our sins, then you should believe that He will bring you through whatever comes your way. Our faithfulness when seen can be a great witness for Christ. So, what is faith? And I think we all know it, and sometimes we do not really think about it. But what is faith? Well, Timothy said in 2 Timothy 1 verse 12, I know who, whom I have believed. Faith is a blind leap into the dark. To many unbelievers, faith is a science. Faith is a devotion to God. Let's see what the book of Hebrews says about faith in Hebrews 11, verse 1 to 3, and I'll read it for us. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith, we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. So, what does that tell us? It says true faith is confidence in God. True faith is obedience to God's word. Your faith will be tried. Charles Spurgeon once said, If you want great faith, then expect great trials. Faith is a common denominator in our lives. When we got up this morning, we had faith that the light would come on when we flipped the switch. And of course, except when it is load shedding, of course. When we walk in a building, we have faith in the construction crew and the engineers that built the building. The Bible insists that we personally put our faith in Jesus. Acts 4 verse 12 says, Nor is there any salvation in any other, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. Hudson Taylor was a missionary of great faith. When he first went to China to do work for the Lord, he went on a boat. The boat had got caught in a calm, windless sea, very close to a cannibal island. The boat was slowly drifting towards the cannibals. The captain came to Hudson asking for prayer. He replied that he would, if only the captain set his sails to catch a breeze. The captain declined because he did not want to make a laughing stock of himself by setting sails when there was no wind. But Taylor was insistent on this. Reluctantly, the captain set the sails. And while Hudson was praying, there was a knock at the door. The captain asked if he was still praying, and of course he was. The captain told him to stop because they had more wind than they could handle. Hudson Taylor's faith was strong enough to move a boat stuck on a windless sea. Now let's look at another man of faith stuck on a boat. Let's look at verse 7 in chapter 11 of Hebrews. 
It says, By faith Noah, when warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. By his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that comes by faith. Faith caused Noah to work for God. If you look in Genesis chapter 6 verse 5 to 7, you will see this is, this is, is a story of God's saving grace. Noah was strong in faith, strong enough that God saved Noah and his family. Noah stood against the whole world. Have you ever felt maybe you stood by yourself in your faith? I know many times I have. Noah built an ark because he believed in God. Every board he sword screamed faith. Every swing of the hammer screamed faith. Does your work scream faith? Faith will make us work. For 120 years, Noah was faithful planning and building the ark. 450 feet long, 75 feet wide and 45 feet high. That's nearly one and a half times the size of a rugby field. Awful hard to hide it from the ridicule and the laughter. Everyone was laughing at crazy old Noah. Can you imagine an ark of that size, a hundred, almost, well, almost 600 miles from the nearest ocean? People refused to believe Noah about the coming flood. Yet in his faith, Noah kept on working. He kept on doing God's work. Then in one of his greatest steps of faith, he and his family stepped on the ark. Noah was a great man of faith and his life showed it. Today, does your life show your faith? By faith, Noah built an ark. By faith, Abel offered a better sacrifice. By faith, Abraham became a father. By faith, Moses' parents hid him. By faith, the people passed the Red Sea. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell. By faith, Jesus obeyed his father. By faith, he died on Calvary. And by that faith, we walk with him today. George Mueller, a very interesting man and one of my role models, was a pastor in England during the 19th century. He became discouraged with his congregation when they showed a lack of faith. They no longer trusted God to answer their prayers. While well, George began to pray and ask God to help his many ministries that will let the people know that it was only acts of God. He prayed for resources needed, but told no one of them. He wanted people to know that God had provided only through prayer and because of faith. During his ministry, George started the Scriptural Knowledge Institute for the distribution of scripture and education. He also began an orphanage, and by the time of his death, there were four homes caring for over 2,000 children. He distributed over 144 million rand. At the age of 93, when he passed away, his worldly possessions were valued at a mere 10,000 rand. Talk about faith. George Mueller never told anyone, just God. He had trust and unwavering faith in God. But faith alone will not get us there. We are faithful to God because of his saving grace. Ephesians 2 verse 8 says, For it is by grace you have been saved. Without his saving grace we would not make it to heaven. Our works will not get us there. Now Saranda, my oldest daughter, loves softball. It is almost like baseball. And I heard the story of Johnny and the Lord that were watching a baseball game. The Lord's team versus Satan's. The good team was up to bat with two outs tied at zero. The first batter to come up was named Love. He swung at the first pitch. 
line drive up the middle, base it. The next batter was named Faith, who also got a single. The third was named Godly Wisdom. He watched his pitches and he walked because Godly Wisdom never swings at what Satan's, Satan throws. The bases are now loaded and the Lord looks over at Johnny and said, Here comes the star player. Up to the plate comes Grace. Johnny said, Well, he doesn't look like much. And Satan's whole team began to laugh. Satan thought the game was in the bag. He threw the first pitch. Grace connected to everyone's surprise and launched a rocket to dead center. Home run. Game over. Then the Lord asked Johnny if he knew why love, faith and godly wisdom could not get on base but couldn't get to win. Johnny answered no. So the Lord explained, If your love, faith and wisdom had won the game, you would think you'd done it by yourself. Love, faith and wisdom can get you on base, but only God's grace can get you home. You have an opportunity today to make a decision about that grace, whether to accept it or not. How about your faith? Is your faith strong enough to handle trials that may come your way? Talk to God today and ask Him for His help and His strength. Let's pray together. Oh Lord, we need your help. We need your help, especially in the times that we are living in where our faith gets tested almost daily. Lord, but, but it doesn't help us to only have faith. We need your grace as well in our lives. Lord, And we, I pray this morning for each person that is listening. Lord, that you will do your work in their lives. Lord, that we will understand what real faith is. Faith that we need to live out daily through your grace. We ask in your name, Jesus. Amen.